think we've seen quite a number of reports that attacks are fast in cloud, but we have done some extensive threat research, which we published in our threat report this summer that indicates that the average time of a cloud attack is about 10 minutes. So the benchmark is based primarily on that research. And then it also has inputs from uh, conversations we've had with our customers about what they're experiencing in terms of their own SLAs and their ability to respond to the attacks that they see in cloud. It's very much developed in partnership with our customers and other uh, industry experts as well. And the idea is that because the attacks in cloud are fast, we need some standard essentially to know whether our security programs or specifically our threat detection and response programs are fast enough to respond to, respond to those attacks. Um, so our customers, for example, have incident response SLAs in cloud on the order of 10 or 15 minutes. And when we discuss with them kind of like what that means, they all sort of say the same thing. They're like, look, we are seeing a lot of inbound um, suspicious behavior, and it's getting to the point where a human being can't even process it all. So we need some new way of, of dealing with that. Uh, and we essentially sp spoke with them, spoke with uh, like the analyst firms and anyone else kind of in the industry that's privy to what's going on, and decided that 555 was a reasonable standard for uh, detecting fast in cloud. And the five stand for five seconds to detect a single signal, of which there should be multiple data sources, five minutes to correlate relevant signals into a high fidelity detection, and then five more minutes in order to initiate the incident response for that detection. Yeah, good question. I mean, it's a little challenging, actually, because the primary data source a lot of people use is logs, which makes a lot of sense. Um, we've been using logs for years, and, and also in cloud, the providers tend to offer the logs to you, uh, so you can just go grab them and nothing to configure. But logs tend to be quite slow. In fact, often they don't arrive for you to analyze until like five minutes later. So the point is you need multiple data sources, and some of the at least some of those signals have to resolve on the order of seconds. So one example might be system calls. Uh, this is what we use in our product. Uh, you might also be using network telemetry. Uh, you might be using any number of things. But the point is you have to be able to tell, you have to be able to process that signal within five seconds of when it occurs, which is very fast. That's uh, that's quite a high bar. Yeah, I think this is actually the hardest part of the benchmark, uh, to be honest. And this is speaking to the fact that we need to be able to connect the dots, if you will, right? Like when I see something happen in my logs and I see something else happen on my endpoint or I see something else happen in a container, I need to be able to connect those two pieces of information to know that they're related. And it's really hard to do because a lot of the activity we see uh, in, in IT in general is benign and you don't know that it's actually not benign until you've done some postmortem, right? So the top security teams, both on-premise and in cloud, by the way, have very sophisticated detection engineering practices. Uh, top, our top customers do as well. But the key ultimately for most people to get up to speed on this is you have to sort of partner with vendors that are very serious about threat intelligence and very serious about creating the detection engineering for you, right? So we're talking like threat intelligence, MDR providers, uh, vendors like Sysdig who are kind of building cloud native threat intelligence all the time because you need a way to know like what am I even looking for like which three things together matter right uh, so I think you start by partnering and then hopefully you build up the skill set in your teams to where they're able to know what in your specific environment uh, are going to be those key signals to, to correlate fast. Uh, so for incident response, uh, we specifically said to initiate response because you may not be able to complete the incident response within five minutes, but you should be reacting to these signals really, really quickly. And I actually think this is a point of opportunity that the cloud provides for us that we had a much harder time with on-premise. Um, because for those of you who are familiar with SOAR, um, S-O-A-R, that's Security Orchestration Automation and Response, it's the notion that, that you could create automated playbooks to respond to certain kinds of activities in your SOC. And in cloud, it's actually much easier to leverage that because everything is API based and all of the sort of control plane infrastructure is, is uni uniform. So you know exactly what kinds of things are going to exist in this 
environment, right? And, and so you can use that to, to your benefit to create a lot of automated response actions to those signals that we were talking about um, in the prior two questions, right? And the key here is that people are scared to do auto response because they're used to this notion that downtime is bad. Uh, in cloud, it's much safer to do auto response because you can bring things back much more easily. But also um, the challenge is doing the right amount of auto response, right? Like you don't necessarily want the automatic action to like burn down the environment. What you want is for it to take some, you know, maybe some quarantine response, maybe some sort of scope limiting response, something that is just enough to slow the attacker down or maybe stop them from moving on to lateral movement, but is non-destructive to the environment. So I think we have a lot to learn as an industry on that front, especially in the cloud, but I also think there's a huge amount of opportunity that we didn't have before. Yeah, uh, I would say not close. Uh, I mean, why set a benchmark that everybody can meet, right? Uh, to be honest, I think even the higher end companies are going to be meeting the this benchmark mostly for a, a handful of key use cases. Uh, and by the way, I'll give the caveat that I would never expect every company to be able to do 555 response on every use case, right? But for sort of critical scenarios where if you sit down and you think about your threat landscape and your and your risk assessment, like if this happened in cloud tomorrow, I would have the worst day of my life as a security leader or security practitioner. For those use cases, you should be able to respond on this time scale because that's how fast the attacks happen. So yes, it's aspirational for most organizations. If you're not subscribed to the cloud native way of operating, like the, the immutable infrastructure, sort of distributed architecture, um, ephemeral asset management approaches, you're going to have really struggle. So don't try to hold yourself to 555 until you have started to adopt some of those cloud paradigms, but also adopting those cloud paradigms will make it much easier for you to, to meet the standard. Like I already alluded to, I think you really have to choose a couple of key use cases that you're going to react to. So I don't know what that is going to be for your company, but I'll give like a very simple example that's probably not the, the, the scariest use case, but it's a use case everyone has, um, detecting crypto miners, right? So you know for a fact that a crypto miner should never be running in a cloud instance because it's frankly not cost effective. And so if you see one, you should shut it down. And for the time being, we actually don't see this happen often enough, right? Uh, so I would start with that. I'd be like, hey, can you detect a crypto miner in your environment? Can you shut it down within 555? Uh, if you can't do that, you probably can't do anything more complex either. So I would just start there. But over the long term, um, especially if you're building a security team or you're kind of like developing a security program, you really need to think about, first of all, hiring talent that is going to be able to execute on the automation and the cloud native aspects because you're asking your security operations center to do things that they are really unfamiliar with. Um, and that's going to take some time and some patience, but you really need the right talent and the right nurturing kind of environment. Um, and secondly, you do need the right tools and processes, right? So make sure you have the visibility into those signals so that you can correlate them and make sure that you actually build a process by which people can iterate, right? So anytime they learn something from an incident response process, they can improve the next incident response process by building a lot of these things into the automation um, that is hopefully evolving over time. Thank you.